Hello everyone. This is a showcase video for a tool I've created for Football Manager 23 and 24 that I've called FM Radar. You can think of it as a data dashboard where you can visualize player data extracted directly from the game in a variety of ways to both compare players and highlight their individual strengths and weaknesses. This tool runs entirely on Google Sheets and no external plugins or programming knowledge is needed. The only installation steps required in order for you to use it are downloading and importing the views I've created for FM and making a copy of the spreadsheet for yourself. This video will contain installation and setup instructions, a brief overview of the tool, some ways you can use it, how the tool works and how to modify it, and my inspirations and acknowledgements. The first step to getting your own copy of this sheet working is by opening the link in the description and then going File and Make a Copy. You can save it wherever you'd like in your drive, just hit Make a Copy from there, and then open it up and you can start the rest of the installation process. Alright, to start the installation process, you want to use the link in the description to download the views. So just hit download on that, and once that's done, navigate to your downloads folder. There's mine. You just want to right click the folder, extract all, and extract. You've got all the views in here now. So you want to select all of them and copy. Then navigate to your Football Manager data folder. I've put the, uh, the default path for this up on the screen now. I've moved mine just to save storage space, but it's the same thing. Here it is here. Now if you haven't already, create a views folder and if you've already got one that's perfect, double click on that and then right click paste. I've already got them all here but you can do that and it should work nicely. So now we'll jump into FM as you can see here and I'm going to open the squad screen because this is where I'll show you the first view. So click on the little drop down next to the players text, go uh, drop down, custom and then import view and select the FM radar squad view. Hit load on that and it should be ready to go. This is all the data that the tool uses um, and we can extract it from here. You can also do this for the uh, scouting screens. We have players in range, there's a, there's a view for that. We have scouted players, there's a view for that and we have shortlist also. Same installation instructions, we've got custom, import view and all that. Let's go back to the squad screen now just to demonstrate. Click on any player first of all and then hit control A. This should select all your players. And one, from here, you want to go Control or Command P. This should bring up the print dialog menu. This doesn't always work for some reason, so the other option is to go FM Options and Print Screen. That should be the same dialog box from earlier. From here, click on Web Page and hit OK, and then save this wherever you'd like. I'm just going to save it in my Football Manager Data folder. Uh, just remember for later. So hit Save on that, and yes. Cool. Let's jump back into the sheet. Cool. Now that we're here, we want to open up the uh, the file that we saved just before. Perfect. There's mine, untitled. Double click that and it should open in your web browser. Um, and there you can see all the data that we extracted directly from the game. For demonstration, I'm just going to copy across some of Liverpool's midfielders. So you want to go from the top left of the name uh, of the player that you want down to the bottom right. This should select all the cells that you need. You can also just do it one at a time by just selecting a whole row. Either way, you can select a maximum of six players at a time, and in this case I'm just going to pick four. Select all those, you can hit Control c or just right click and copy. Go back to the radar, go to Input Data, and delete everything that's already there by clicking and dragging on all the, cell, on all the rows, I should say, and hitting Delete on your keyboard. And then you can paste the new players in there. Make sure you have the A2 cell selected before you do that, just to make sure that everything lines up. You can also move uh, these players around by sort of hitting the rows again and hitting Control c Control v Make sure you don't use Cut. So you can't use Control x that will sort of break the formatting. Um, make sure you just use Copy and Paste and just sort of delete any duplicates. I'm just going to undo that. Now, if everything's gone well, if we go back to the radar, here we can see all the players and we can select on one of the names and hit, let's say, Wataru Endo, see the stats and the radar and that should be it. Before we start using the tool, I'll give a brief overview of everything, with more detailed explanations coming later in the video. First, we have the metrics I've created to summarise player performance across different disciplines. As we can see in the radar panel, we have heading, defending, passing, dribbling, creating and scoring. Each metric is colour coded so that its corresponding statistics can be easily found, such as in the overview and ranking panels. These metrics combine the raw statistics extracted from the game into a single value for each discipline, ranging from 0 to 10. 
Each player's performance in this discipline is rated by this value, with a 0 meaning the player is among the worst players in the game with that metric, and a 10 meaning they are one of the best. I'll go further into how these scores are calculated later. Next we have the percentiles. These are essentially the same as the metric scores, but are used for each individual statistic in the overview panel. A percentile is a way of describing how a value compares to other values for the same statistic. In this case, it shows what percentage of players your player is better than in that statistic. For example, we can see that Thiago is better than 89% of players in terms of the number of passes he completes per 90, with an average of 61.89. The reason we are able to know these scores and percentiles is due to the data set I've created to power the FM radar. I ran a full season in FM24 with the top 5 leagues loaded, and then extracted all the data of the players who had played more than 500 minutes across the season. The data from these 1,720 players is what informs the scores and percentiles you can see across the tool, and the players you input into the tool are compared directly against the data set. This tool features visual representations of the data shown in the form of the Metric Ratings panel and the Position Ratings panel. The Metric Ratings panel is a radar chart, which is where the tool gets its name from. Here we can see the metric scores of all the players using a coloured polygon for each player. This panel is great for getting an overview of the profiles of all players and comparing them to one another. Next we have the Position Ratings panel. This panel rates each player on their performance in key metrics for each position. For example, the score for central midfielders is based on a player's scores for passing, dribbling and creating. This panel is excellent when you want to know where your squad's strengths and weaknesses are, and when comparing potential new signings to your existing players. Finally, we have the Ranking panel. This simply displays the statistics of the player you've selected in the Overview panel, ranked from highest score to lowest. Paired with the Overview panel, this is the perfect way to see what a player does and how good they are at it. Now that we know what's going on, we can start looking at some good ways to use the tool. You can use it however you like of course, but I'll give you four examples of ways that I like to use it when playing FM. First we have squad player comparisons. Here you can see I've inputted all six of Liverpool's regular midfield options in my save. We can use the FM radar to compare these players against each other and see who should be in the starting 11. The first player that stands out to me is Dominic Schoberslai, who scores a perfect 10 in creating. He is followed closely behind by McAllister, who scores a 9.5. We clearly have some excellent creative options in midfield. However, using the metric ratings panel we can see that they are rather different players, with Schoberslai scoring higher in dribbling, defending and scoring, but McAllister scoring much higher in passing. Differences such as these can be seen among all the players displayed on the chart, and we get a clear overview of what all of our midfielders are doing. Second, we have player versus player insights. Let's say we want to compare Schoberslai and McAllister more closely. You can see I've removed the rest of the players in the tool for clarity, but you can still do this with everyone else still in there. If we look at the overview of Schoberslai, we can see that his creative numbers are unrivaled, scoring in the 100th percentile for expected assists, crosses completed and key passes per 90, meaning he's one of the best players in the game at these stats. However, he is more reserved in his progressive passing, scoring in only the 47th percentile on this stat. This is backed up by the ranking panel, where we can see that progressive passing is only his 15th best stat out of 20. If we now switch to the overview of McAllister, we can immediately see that his passing numbers are far better than Schobber's lies, while still performing excellently when it comes to creating. However, his defensive numbers are lacking a bit, even when compared to Soberslai's more modest values. Third, we can identify squad weaknesses. Let's bring back the rest of the midfielders now. If we look at the position ratings panel, we can see that we have excellent central midfielders in Thiago and McAllister, with scores of 8.4 and 8.1 respectively. Soberslai is an elite attack-minded midfielder with a score of 8.5, with Curtis Jones providing a solid backup option with a score of 7.6. This leaves the defensive midfield position, where Wataru Endo is the highest scorer with a 7.5. While this is solid, it's not quite at the elite level we want for a team like Liverpool, so this is potentially an area for improvement. This brings me on to the final use case for the FM Radar, which is scouting potential new signings. If we go back to FM for a second, we can see that I've shortlisted three players as potential new signings for defensive midfield. You can search for and shortlist players however you like when using this tool, while keeping in mind that a maximum of six players can be compared at any one time. In this case, all three players are relatively inexpensive, have favourable in-game attributes and are interested in signing. Let's export the data of these players to the tool and compare them against our existing defensive mids. I've now inputted the players into the FM radar. 
Immediately, we can see in the metric ratings panel that Yusuf Afana is better at heading and defending than both our existing options and the other two players I shortlisted. His passing is also excellent, with a score of 8.2. Digging deeper into his stats with the overview and ranking panels, we can see that he scores above the 90th percentile for percentage of headers won and tackles per 90, while also scoring highly in percentage of tackles won, progressive passes and passes attempted. These all sound like excellent stats for a defensive midfielder, which is backed up by his rating of an 8.0 in the position ratings panel. Using this information, we can tell that he would likely be an excellent first team signing. Alright, before we finish up, I just think I'll go through how the sheet works. So, as I explained earlier, I've got a data set of 1,720 players, it should be. Yep. Which was a simulation of a full season across the top five leagues. These are the stats of all these players, as you can see to the right. And it's the same stuff as you've imported directly from the game. This, uh, these values are compared against each other and converted to a percent, uh, percent rank, it's called. And this is just a percentile, which you can view here or as a score. Now these scores for the metrics such as heading and drip defending, I've manually created as, an, as a weighted average. So if we go to the uh, rating calc tab, this should all be hidden. I've just un unhid it for this purpose, but you can feel free to do so by going the three little bars at the bottom left and hitting uh, the, un the, the hidden one. I've set it to protected just so that you don't accidentally do anything. But if you know what you're doing, of course, you can just click the like, don't show this again, and go. you can go nuts really. I've got the weights for all the individual stats up here. Uh, I've color coded them depending on what uh, metric they go towards. So of course, red being heading, orange being tackling. And the weights are what informs the weighted average score for that uh, metric. So you can see that the uh, defending metric is composed of 1.5 times head as one percentage and 0.5 times head as one. Same for every stat. Um, I've put these in over some time and sort of fiddled with them. It should give you a pretty good score, and I think it should be pretty accurate in terms of their performance level. Of course, FM is limited with the number of stats they have available. Like, there's no um, progressive carries, there's no, uh, I don't know, touches in opposition area, nothing like that. So, but I'm working with what we've got. Um, of, of course, it should be noted that it's quite hard to measure defensive performance with statistics. I've made it sort of predominantly tackle, percentage of tackles one and number of possession one per game because those are objectively good stats for a defender to have. Um, apart from that though, I've kind of put tackles, interceptions and blocks pretty far down the ranking in that weighted average. The other thing you can change is for the position, um, the position ratings per player. Here I've got, for each position that I've got on the chart, I've got uh, which metrics it uses and of course the weights again. You can change these as well. Um, I've also fiddled with these and made sure that it represents the play as well. And that should be all you can uh, modify safely. Of course, you can go nuts with everything, really, if you'd like. Um, it should work pretty well. I've done some pretty rigorous testing, I'd like to think. Uh, but yeah, if you'd like to change anything, please do. Um, it is, you know, your copy of it, after all. But yeah, if you have any more questions, of course, please do leave a comment, and I will try and answer them as best I can. All right, and finally, I'm just going to go over my sort of inspirations and acknowledgements for this project. First of all, we have FM Stag with his excellent work in uh, extracting data from FM and you know modifying it and using it to value players, especially in some of his more recent saves and his write-ups for those, which are brilliant. I'd highly recommend you read them. Uh, he's used sort of the radar chart to measure players' performance against each other. This was pretty much the spark that allowed me to create this tool here. So massive props to FM Stag. Please read his blogs; they are really, really entertaining. Next we have FB Ref, which is where I basically ripped off the percentile chart from. Um, this is what I use to measure players' performance in real life, especially for things like Fantasy Premier League. Really love looking at players' stats here. Of course, Mary Fowler, the GOAT, um, really high with the pass completion. Love to see it. And finally, we have the Athletics sort of pizza chart style. Also an inspiration in terms of um, quantifying data and the radar chart especially with sort of uh, color coding different areas of the game and trying to put stats into that to represent one score. Um, I think that should do it now. So I hope you guys all enjoy using the tool. Please let me know if you have any questions about it. And yeah, happy scouting.